Good morning there, Mortgage Coaches. My name is Brian Mearing. I'm a national trainer here at Mortgage Coach. And today we're going to be going through a beginner session of Mortgage Coach. So you're going to be have an opportunity to build your first total cost analysis for a, a purchase transaction. And this is a, uh, an interactive uh, webinar. So we want you to go ahead and build the presentation along with me. Um, so we'll put together a game plan of what we're going to be doing today. Um, real quickly give you a, a little overview of uh, the products that you have available to you. Uh, Rate Watch, Mortgage Coach, and then uh, you're going to build your first total cost analysis uh, for a purchase transaction. So you're going to want to make sure that, uh, that you have your login credentials. Um, so if everybody could just confirm that, uh, that you have your login credentials, uh, either raise your hand or type in the question area so that way we can uh, make sure that you get yourself set up so that you can access Mortgage Coach and go ahead and build a presentation along with me. So again, um, I'm going to pause here for a second. Please either raise your hand or um, type in the question area that you have your, your login credentials. Thank you, Denise. Still quite a few more people down here that i got to get some type of response of so that we can go ahead and move forward. So again, um, respond if you have your login credentials by either typing in the question area or by raising your hand. Thank you, Brittany. Got to get some more people in here, though. Come on, folks. Um, raise your hand or type in the question area if you have your login credentials. If you don't, that's fine. I just need to know so that way we can make sure that, uh, that you get uh, set up. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate it. Couple more people in there. Uh, Fred, Lisa, Carmen, just want to make sure you have your, uh, your credentials so that you can log in and uh, build the presentation along with me so that you know how to use Mortgage Coach. So if you could raise your hand or type in the question area, please. Thank you, Fred. All right, perfect. Okay. Um, and what you're going to want, what we're going to want you to do after you built the presentation, we're going to want you to send it to us here at Mortgage Coach. Um, we'll be happy to give you some feedback, but that's also a way that they evaluate uh, our training staff to make sure that we're doing a good job um, by what you're able to produce at the end of this uh, this training session. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start off with the first part of the presentation. Let's go ahead and do a little review of uh, the different app or the different tools that you're going to have access to. So first off, uh, what you're looking at on your screen right now is the Rate Watch um, app, and it is on my mobile device, my iPad, and um, you can see what's going on in the market today. It looks like we're giving up a little bit of the gains that we had um, taken advantage of over the last uh, couple weeks here. It seems like uh, pricing it should have gotten quite a bit better hopefully for you folks over the last couple weeks and might be giving a little bit back today. And what it's doing is it's tracking the Fannie Mae 30 year percent or 30 year coupon at 3% which is the closest to par. And what this tool does for you is you might be going, okay, well why would I want to have this downloaded to my to my mobile device. Why would I want to use this Rate Watch app? Why is it included with my membership? It gives you an opportunity as an originator to demonstrate that you, as a mortgage professional, have your finger on the pulse of what's going on with the mortgage-backed security market. You're going to be getting questions from um, your realtor partners and also from your borrowers. What's going on with rates? That's the very first question that somebody's going to ask you once they find out that you're a mortgage professional. They might be trying to make polite conversation or they might have a sincere interest. That's for you to be able to determine and it's a tool that you could go ahead and take out and share with them and show them what's happening with the mortgage-backed security market. Now, if you're taking a look at the screen right now, you'll see this diamond has appeared. What this is telling you that there has been a shift in the market of 15 basis points or more. So it's, it's basically an alert that's advising you that there's been a shift, whether it's up or down. Unfortunately, today it's down. You can see the whole background is red. Um, when we're up, the background will be green for you. But this is information that you could share with your borrowers so that you can go ahead and further you know, demonstrate, um, share your opinion as to what they should be doing with their rate. We need to lock this rate in for you now. Here's why. Um, we need to go ahead and continue to let the, 
the rate float, we need to look for a certain point in the market to happen so that we can go ahead and get this particular rate for you. Whatever your position is, whatever your advice is as a mortgage professional, you can go ahead and back it up and share it, show them using your rate watch tool. And it's real easy to share. You can see you can send out a screenshot, simply click on the share button, and you can send that out to, to again your borrowers, your realtor partners via email, via text. Um, it's something that you can even post on Facebook. If you want to, if you have your own professional page um, on Facebook and you want to go ahead and share what rates are doing at a particular point in time, you can go ahead and shoot this, um, upload it onto Facebook and go ahead and share it that way. Some of the additional information that you're going to have with your rate watch tool here. Okay, that's the day watch. If you want a longer period of time to be able to share, you know, what's happened with the market over a longer period of time, you could set, you could go to the uh, the home screen and set this up for up to about a year, I believe. I have a two-week period here that's that's being uh, demonstrated as to what's been happening with the market. And you can see, at, like I mentioned, over the last couple of weeks, we kind of went up, and then now we we peaked out, and it looks like we're going to get back a little bit of it, at least right now at this moment in time. Now, you don't have to be an expert in the mortgage-backed security market. You actually have access to experts, and you could share their commentary as to why your borrower might want to go ahead and, and take advantage of the market where it's at a certain point. You have uh, Dan Rawich and Neil Trinery, and all you have to do is click on that information, and you can see you'll get their expert opinion as to what you should do um, based upon where the market's at, based upon what's going to be happening as far as certain pieces of economic data being released. It's a great tool for you to be able to stay on top of what's going on. You can see what your competition is doing as far as uh, the, the lenders that are being tracked. Looks like today um, we're down, as I mentioned, 44 pricing for the worst, 24 for the better. And you could set yourself up to receive alerts via text, via email, um, so you, you can stay in touch with what's going on at the market. The big advantage that I feel is that you're going to get an alert and you could see how your, your company's lock desk is going to react to what's going on in the, uh, in the mortgage-backed security market. With, what are they going to be doing with rates based upon how uh, the securities are trading? So it's a benefit to you because if you could see what's happening with how your lock desk reacts, gives you a little bit of an edge so that way you can go ahead and lock something in before they have a chance perhaps to go ahead and make any type of adjustments. Um, so I would highly encourage you to download it to your mobile device. I'd also encourage you to download uh, the Rate Watch or the Mortgage Coach app to your mobile device. You can see I have both of them here. It's real easy to do on, a, uh, on an Apple device. You just go to the App Store, type in Mortgage Coach like I did up here in the search and you can see the two uh, apps that you're going to want to download. And there's no additional cost to do that. It's it's completely um, included with your membership with Mortgage Coach. You have Rate Watch and Mortgage Coach available to you. Okay, so just thought I'd share that little piece of information with you. Let me go ahead and move over. And um, this is a site that we want to make sure that everybody's uh, at, so we can go ahead and log in with our credentials. The site is Edge. Dot mortgagecoach.com. If you haven't already done so, you're going to want to bookmark it or save it to your favorites so that way you can access it uh, more quickly. And um, Lori, we should uh, we should have somebody be working on that for you to get you the uh, the credentials that you were looking for. Um, you should be getting those here very shortly. And anybody else that does not have them, please type that in. It looks like uh, majority of the people in the class were, were pretty well good to go. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and log in. Okay. So when you first log in to Mortgage Coach, this is going to be the dashboard that you're going to be accessing. Your home screen, I guess you could say. So you have your client area here and your partner area here. The partner area is for where you're going to be building presentation for your realtors, um, realtor partners, uh, CPAs, financial advisors, basically your referral partners. Uh, you'll be building presentations for them here. You're going to be building presentations for your borrowers in the client area here. And um, let me go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start with a, a new client. 
Yeah, we've got a, a big football game coming up uh, this weekend. And uh, maybe we'll go ahead and let's see here. I'll use we'll use Cam Newton for this presentation. So what we're going to do is build a, a purchase presentation for our borrower Cam Newton. I clicked on new client to get to this particular page. And you're going to want to take note that it defaults to individual, client, and own. If you want to do a presentation that is not tied to a specific borrower or property, um, an example of that would be if you're doing a, a presentation to maybe uh, a group of first-time home buyers or maybe a realtors, you can simply click on uh, a marketing presentation and you can see that it's geared more towards an, uh, a group. It's not asking you for a specific person. You can name it uh, for a report headline rather than an individual. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to do it for an individual. And um, client, 99% of the time you're going to do it as client. Now here you can see that the default is own. You could click on rent and if you did that, it's a, it's a presentation that we call a rent versus own rather than a total cost analysis uh, or TCA. Uh, a rent versus own presentation is great for a first time home buyer that is currently maybe renting and you'd like to show them the benefits that they would have as a homeowner versus that of a, of a renter. It's a, it's a good presentation, again, to demonstrate if you've got somebody that's renting at the moment um, and you'd like to show them you know, the benefits of being a homeowner where you'd be able to write off the uh, mortgage interest and property taxes and show them you know, how that could come into play for them. All right, um, of course, you try and capture as much information as you possibly can. And if you were referred this particular client from a realtor, um, you'd want to go ahead and put their information in here. And if you want to include anybody in the loop as far as getting a notification that uh, the, uh, the presentation has been viewed, say you have a, a processor or a loan officer assistant that's helping you and you want them to receive a notification that the presentation has been viewed. Well, all you have to do is type in their email address and later on in the presentation you would uh, put a check box into a, into a check mark into a box and they would receive a notification that the presentation has been viewed as well. This friendly name, um, the friendly name feature basically is a way that you can keep yourself organized because what you're doing when you're creating this presentation for this particular borrower, Cam Newton, you're basically creating a folder for the borrower. And you might have several different presentations in that folder. And what you're going to want to do is be able to distinguish which presentation is which. So this one I will simply put as um, maybe it's a pre-approval. Let me show you what I mean by this. So, and to save the information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrow over to the right on the very first page. From that point forward, I can arrow to the left or to the right to save the information. But let me real quickly go ahead and show you what that friendly name feature does for you here. So I'm going to click on the home. I'm going to go to, uh, you can see the bar were there, but I'm going to go ahead and click on view all and I'm going to click on search. And you can see my bar over here, Cam Newton, and the presentation that I was just working on, which is the pre-approval presentation. Now, say I want to build a, another presentation for, for Cam Newton. Um, perhaps we're going to be going under contract, and he, and he wants a presentation that's geared specifically to uh, the contract price of the, uh, the home. What I could then do is just simply um, make sure that his name is highlighted, and then click on Add Analysis. I click on Yes. Now the benefit of doing it this way is that it will bring in all the information that you've, you've previously entered for this particular borrower. So it saves you time. You don't have to uh, bring in all that information over time and time again that you build the presentation. Maybe the purchase price is say 325k purchase price. So now when I go and I start looking for different presentations for the borrower that I've been working with, Cam Newton, all I have to do is go to the folder here, you can see, open it up, and you can see there's two presentations in there, the pre-approval that we're going to be working on, 
and maybe like the contract price there, the 325. All right, so let me go ahead and open this one up. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Go ahead and open that up. All right, so again, this is the pre-approval, and I want my assistant to get a copy or an alert that the presentation has been viewed by my borrower. You can see the different goals that you have uh, to be able to recognize here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on purchase for this presentation. All the other ones are going to be in reference to a refinance. So you can see that we've advanced from the client tab to the goals tab, and we're going to gradually keep advancing through each of the different tabs, ending up here in the presentation tab as our final area. Let's go ahead and arrow over to the right. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a, uh, a purchase price. And for this particular one, maybe I'm going to do a, um, a range of different prices. Because maybe the borrowers reached out to you and said, you know, I want to, I want to take a look at uh, different price ranges for homes um, that I'm looking for. And I'm looking, say, between, say, $300,000 and $350,000. So I'm going to go ahead and click on $300,000 as my first uh, purchase price. You can see that I, I have four or three additional fields that data could possibly be entered in, but those are for a refinance transaction. So the only thing in a purchase transaction that I have to put in there is the price that I want to go ahead and, and start using for a potential purchase price. And I do that in the red highlighted field. Now, if for some reason that you forget to put data in a red highlighted field, Take a look at the uh, the tab here in that assumptions area. An exclamation mark appears. So anytime that you do not put data in a red highlighted field, you'll get a little reminder. And you'll see an exclamation mark in this tab rather than a check mark or an arrow telling that you yet you haven't gotten there yet. So the exclamation point is there. Let me go back. I'm going to put that purchase price back at three hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Now you might also notice. A couple buttons down here, the Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae Lookup quick, uh, quick Link buttons. Again, that's for our refinance. So if you want to see if your borrower is eligible for the HARP program, you could go ahead and click on that. It'll direct you to those websites. And you could go ahead and enter the data there to see if your borrower is eligible for those programs. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put some information in here about my borrower's uh, qualifications. The benefit to me in doing that is that as I'm building my product, it's a great way for me to see that I'm um, within the, uh, the guideline requirements for my LTV and my um, income requirements here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, CAM has uh, excellent credit, non-mortgage debt. I'm going to put that there's maybe about $2,500 of non-mortgage debt. Non-mortgage debt, of course, would be um, credit cards, uh, installment loans, things like that, automobile loans. Anything like that that the borrower has that would be appearing on the uh, the credit report. So I'm going to go ahead and put that that $2,500 is costing them uh, maybe about $200 on a monthly basis. Now since this is a purchase transaction, I need to uh, to make sure that there's some source of a down payment. So let's see, my purchase price is going to be roughly between $300 and $350. I'll put that there's say $50,000 in a savings account. And unfortunately, if it's in a savings account, it's probably not earning a heck of a lot of interest. I'll put a quarter percent. And <clears throat> now what's going to happen is the cash to close uh, on my presentation will be deducted from this money that I have indicated in the, uh, the savings balance. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enter information in there for my borrower's tax uh, bracket percentage. The reason that I'd want to do that is that on my presentation, I want to show those benefits to my borrower of being a homeowner. I want to show them the benefit of being able to write off the property taxes, um, the mortgage interest, and depending upon the tax year, possibly the mortgage uh, insurance as well. Now, when you ask a borrower what their tax bracket is, most likely they probably won't know. Um, and you may not know when you, when you get their, their income information. But you can get a better idea of what their tax bracket is by simply clicking on the quick link here. And you can go ahead and you can take a look and see what their filing status is, the tax year that you're looking for. You get a better idea of what uh, type of 
tax bracket that they may fall into. So you can see with that $85,000 income, I'm going to put the 25% uh, the tax bracket. Go ahead and put that there. Now, for those of you in the, in the class that are able to offer the mortgage certificate credit, you go ahead and put your, uh, your values in here. And then you could go ahead and choose the product that you want to apply the certificate credit to um, when you get to that point when you're building the product. I'm going to go ahead and click off of that. Um, if, you need, if you have any questions about that or need uh, more information about that, I'll be happy to, uh, to give you information on that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and arrow over to the right. And again, I mean, these are great questions that you're going to be asking your borrower, but you're not, you know, required to put information in here if you don't want to. Don't feel that just because there's a field there that you, um, you know, that's mandatory that you put data in there. Um, I mean, these are great questions, and as you're interviewing the client, you're probably going to want to make some notes as to how they answer these questions, so that way you can, you know, dial in what their goals are, ways of building rapport with them. Maybe they have two kids into soccer or whatever the case may be. But you can make any type of notes that you want in this yellow rectangular area. And just for your knowledge, um, the borrower is not going to see that anywhere in the presentation. But it's a great way to keep yourself organized again so that you can make sure that you're, you're building your presentation specifically to what your borrower's goals are and you're able to maintain you know, rapport with them by having uh, good little reminders in there. Okay, for this particular presentation, let's see here, we gotta have a maximum purchase price of say 350, so let's put uh, our maximum mortgage payment at 3,000. Let's put our ideal mortgage payment maybe closer to 25. Our range is gonna be 300 on the low to 350 on the top end. Now we have one more field there. That is going to be for a refinance transaction, so we're going to go ahead and advance on. Now, this is the last uh, screen that we're going to have before we jump into the product area. This is where you're going to spend, I would say, the majority of your time um, in Mortgage Coach is building your products. Let me go ahead and get rid of that product name of product one. I'm going to let my cur cursor go right up into that field, and you'll see a little note pops up. That note is indicating that you can name that product anything that you want, folks. You don't have to be limited. And that's one of the things I really like about mortgage coaches. You can be as descriptive as you want in naming your products. You're not tied to like a drop-down menu where you can only choose, you know, 30-year, 15-year, whatever the case may be. So you can really name the product what uh, is going to be most important for your borrower. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put it at, uh, say, 300 k purchase price, um, and say the borrower is pretty pretty set on doing, well, we'll do it, we'll do it both ways. We'll put 5% uh, down, and we'll go put down payment. There we go. So there, my borrower knows that the purchase price is 300000 and we're putting 5% down. Now you can see that it carried over my purchase price of 300000 Because I named it 5% uh, down, I'm going to go ahead and enter that figure there. And now you can enter your down payment as a dollar figure or as a percentage, and your base loan amount will automatically be calculated for you. Let's say I could go ahead and put together a rate of 4% uh, for the borrower. Now you're going to want to put your term in months rather than month, or months rather than years. First time you put it in there as years, you'll see that huge payment, and you wonder where you, where, what happened. Um, if you have any interest-only products or balloon payment products, you can go ahead and enter that information there. Let me go ahead and advance on. Now, this is where you're going to share with your borrower the closing costs to acquire that particular loan that we that we just built for them. So, what are the closing costs? Well, originators, you could do it in a couple different ways. One of the ways that uh, um, I've seen originators do it is that they share with their borrower. Um, what the costs are, say, as a grouping. So rather than going item by item, what they'll do is they'll put the cost as either APR-related closing costs and non-APR costs. So they'll group all those fees together and put, put those, uh, those numbers as a, as a whole number in there and in, in these two fields. Um, other originators choose to go ahead and you know, be, be real transparent 
show their borrowers exactly all the different uh, details of the transaction, and they'll use what's called a closing cost template. <clears throat> and a closing cost template will look like this. Let me go ahead and pull one up. So you can see that uh, in using a closing cost template, we have a line itemization of all the different costs associated with a particular property. And you can see that there's a drop-down menu here, so I can change or edit any of these fees that I wish to. Um, I could label the fees as a, a percentage or a dollar amount. I could flag who's going to be responsible for the fees, whether it's the borrower, lender, seller, or broker. If it's going to be an APR affecting fee, if I want to add it to the loan, or if it's a prepaid escrow. So let me go ahead and I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to show you how real quick how easy it is to build a template real quick. I'll just touch on it here real quick. I'll pop it, pop uh, four fees in there real quick. I did that by hitting the add fee four times. And you can see the very first fee on our drop down menu is that 203K architectural and engineering fee. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm looking for an underwriter fee. Well, rather than having to scroll through our extensive list here, all I have to do is simply type in the first letter of what that fee begins with. So there's my underwriter fee there. Maybe I'm looking for a processor fee, so I'll go to the P's. There's my processing fee. How about a credit report? I'll go to the C's. And uh, let's go for an appraisal. Let me go to the A's there. So once I get the, the fees in there that I want, I could go ahead and, uh, again, enter them as a dollar figure or as a percentage. I'll just go ahead and put some figures in here. Credit reports, appraisal, there we go. And again, I could flag it as borrower, uh, lender, seller, or broker paid, APR related, add to the loan amount, or prepaid escrow. Now, once I get my fees all set up the way that I want, I'm going to want to save these because more than likely I'm going to need to use these fees for another transaction because you're going to be doing a lot of the same types of transactions for different borrowers. So all I have to do is simply click on Save as Template. You can name it whatever you want. And for those of you originating in multiple states, you can even have a template tied to a specific state. Now, if there's a fee that is not on our drop-down menu that you need, you need to create a custom fee. We do have that feature as well for you. You simply click on Add Custom Fee. You can name it whatever you want and go ahead and make it specific to a loan amount or a property value. I'm going to go ahead and use a template that I already have in place, that conventional fees purchase template. Once you get that all dialed in, you're going to click apply to loan. And then you can see now of those uh, seven fields that were available to you, four of them are now grayed out. So if you need to do any editing there, you would have to go back to the closing cost detail. Now I can adjust uh, any type of information about the cost to get that particular rate. Maybe 4% today is at a cost of, say, a quarter percent. If I want to put some prepaid interest in there, 15 days of prepaid interest, I could do that. If I want to indicate that the borrower has uh, an earnest money deposit down and have that deducted from the, the cash to close, I could put that figure in there, say $2,000. Okay, and you can see that I can add the, uh, the cost, the points, to get that particular rate to the loan amount and the prepaid interest to the prepaid loan amount. But I want to keep my LTV at 95% or lower, so I don't want to add those to my loan amount. If you're curious about what the dollar figures would be for those amounts, you could simply put your cursor in that particular field, and I'll show you what the cost of that particular item is. This could be very helpful for you if you're going to be um, providing some type of credit to the borrower, whether that's coming from you as the lender or the seller. Um, you could go ahead and enter that figure uh, specifically to the dollar amount to cover that particular cost. Okay, let's go ahead and arrow over to the right. Now I can go ahead and enter the figures that are uh, going to be for the, this particular product at that purchase price and what it's going to cost the borrower on a monthly basis. Right now, you can see that I only have 
a PI payment. So this is the principal and interest up there in the top right corner. You can see it's 136063. You can see the name of my product, 300K purchase price, 5% down payment. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Denise had a question. How do you delete a custom fee from the closing cost details if you've added it incorrectly or no longer wanted it? Okay, good question. So anytime that you have a fee that you do not want, see this red trash can over there? You can simply click on that and then that goes away. So let's see here. Say I don't want... <laughs> We want this fee, but I'll just show you here. Let's say we, we're going to get rid of that loan origination fee. There, it's gone now. So just simply click on the red trash can and then click Apply to Loan. So this loan would not have a, a loan origination fee if I clicked Apply to Loan right now. But you can see I, could, I can get rid of as many fees as I want. Simply click on those and they'll all go away. I'm not going to click the Apply to Loan. I want to go ahead and keep what I had there in place. But once you make those changes, click Apply to Loan and then you're good to go. Okay, so all those fees that I entered before are still remaining there. Let me go ahead and arrow over. Thanks for the question, Denise. Good job. All right, let's go ahead and uh, enter those monthly costs in there. So if there's an HOA fee that's associated with this particular property, um, let's go ahead and I'll put uh, $45. Uh, hazard insurance, you can enter it as a dollar amount or a percentage. At this stage, I'm just going to go ahead and enter some estimated figures. We don't actually have a, a home under contract yet, but I happen to know and I can provide them with a, uh, an estimated percentage for the borrower so that way they'll have a pretty good idea what that PITI payment is. And remember, if you take a look up in the top right corner over here, this is still a PI payment yet because we haven't saved these fees yet. Okay, so we're going to have mortgage insurance on this uh, particular product. So I'll go ahead and I'll enter a factor. As you know, it's going to be dependent upon the borrower's FICO score and then also um, your LTV and the source that you're going to, to get that insurance from. I'm just going to go ahead and put a factor in there, 0.68. You might be wondering what this other field is here. If the borrower has maybe like a secondary HOA here in Southern California, there's a lot of communities that have not just one HOA but two HOAs. You could go ahead and put that information in there. Um, if you wanted to share with them, you know, if there's any type of special insurance that they're required to cover, to carry, like uh, flood insurance or um, hurricane or something like that, you could put those factors in there. And you can label it specifically rather than other. Now, if you take a look, the system automatically sets up so that the, the mortgage insurance that I entered here will be removed at 78%. So once the LTV is uh, reaches 78%, that mortgage insurance will be taken off. And then we have, um, you could set up the, uh, the mortgage insurance to be tax deductible if you want. If your investor requires you to pay mortgage insurance for a certain amount of time, maybe they require you to pay uh, a minimum of 24 months of mortgage insurance. You could click on, you can enter that figure there. And if you want to go ahead and take some, uh, set up some reserves to establish that escrow account, maybe 12 months, an additional two for that hazard insurance, and maybe an extra, say, six months there. Okay. So now I have my first product built, and I want to go ahead and make it a PITI payment so that all these fees are going to be recognized. You simply arrow to the left or to the right, and you can see that payment amount change now. It's now $2,004.63. That is a PITI payment for the borrower. Now, you can build up to four products for the borrower. So again, he wants to see a couple different purchase price options. So let me go ahead and add another product. And this one I'll go ahead and I'll put, say, $350,000. Okay, purchase price, 5% down payment. Now, trying to work as efficiently as you can so that you don't have to, to um, type a lot of information again, we allow you to use this copy from button. So simply click on copy from, and I can copy from that product that I just built. I'm going to click OK. So it brings in the exact same scenario that I just built for our borrower. It automatically um, 
brings in, you can see the costs that are associated with it and the monthly costs that are going to be associated with it. But I do have to do a little bit of editing in my purchase price to reflect uh, the name of the product that I just built. So I have to edit that. So I'm going to put 350 in there. There we go. So now this truly is a, a $350,000 purchase price with 5% down, so the same rate. So I could go ahead and, and uh, using that copy from feature, I could show the borrower how much their payment would change with uh, the additional $50,000 uh, for that particular home. You can see up here in the top right corner, it's about a $300 difference uh, from what it, what it was at the $300,000 mark. Now maybe the borrower qualifies for two products, perhaps like a, an FHA alone. So I can go ahead and go add a third product. I'll go ahead and do that. And this time, let's go ahead and I'll, uh, so we're comparing apples to apples, say. So I'll put that 300K purchase price, but I'll put 3.5% down. Or maybe even label it uh, down payment FHA. So that way it's, it's clear to the borrower the different types of loans that we're putting together for them. Now since this is a, uh, an FHA loan, um, it does require an upfront premium. So I'm going to make sure that uh, I flag that. But first I'm going to use the copy from. And I can copy from uh, a couple products. I have two. I'm going to copy from this 300000 one because that way it will go ahead and bring in the purchase price for me. So it's a way that I can compare apples to apples for a conventional loan versus an FHA loan. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flag the system that it is an FHA loan that I'm going to need to collect an upfront mortgage insurance premium. You can see the additional choices that you have. You have VA, USDA, and single premium. I'm going to click on FHA. I'm going to edit my down payment amount. And then maybe my rate's a little bit better. Maybe I could put together 3.875. I'm going to keep my term the same. Now I'll do some editing here as well. If you have a template that is specific to, say, an FHA purchase, you can go ahead and use that one and click Apply to Loan. Maybe that uh, is at a little bit of a discount this time. I'm going to enter that as a negative number. Maybe it's a negative quarter percent. I'll keep my prepaid interest the same. Now if I wanted to add that to the loan amount, I, I could because it's a negative number and I'll still be uh, within my um, LTV thresholds. I'm going to put 15 days of prepaid interest in there. And I have to go ahead and enter my factor for my upfront mortgage insurance premium there. There we go. Oops. And that is something that can be financed. I clicked off that too quick. Let me go ahead and go back. That is something that can be financed. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. It won't throw off my, my ratios. Now I'm going to change my factor for that mortgage insurance to be 0.85 for that FHA loan. Now. The borrower will have that for the full term of the loan, 360 payments, and I'm good to go. So now the borrower is going to be able to see apples to apples the, the, uh, the two uh, products at that same purchase price, the $300,000. So I might as well go ahead and build a fourth product at that $350,000. And I could do it real quickly. All I have to simply do is go add another product. I'm going to go ahead and copy from my FHA this time. I click OK. I'm going to name my new product here. 350K purchase price, 3.5% DP FHA. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and bump up my purchase price, $350,000. Keep all this information the same. Keep all this information the same. And there you go. It's that quick. So I built four products for the borrower to go ahead and take a look at. Um, there's a couple different purchase prices in there. So you can see you could be as creative as you want using Mortgage Coach to be able to get the benefit of being able to communicate to your borrower the products that you're able to offer to them. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into the analysis area over here which is the next tab, and you're going to make it specific to what the borrower's goals are rather than just throwing some products up there and 
not making them say customized or specific to what your borrower's goals may be. You want to go ahead and, of course, complete a good interview with your borrower so you know how long are you going to be in that house. Well, I'm going to be in that house, I see, uh, about six years. So you can go ahead and set up this, this time frame specifically to what the borrower's goals are. It's a great way for you to be able to differentiate yourself as a mortgage originator. You're not just going ahead and um, you know showing them a simple spreadsheet, sliding across the table a simple fee sheet. You're building a customized presentation for specifically what their goals are. Now, if you take a look, that long-term analysis period, I indicated that I want it to be set up for six years. That's where these figures are going to be adjusted. So whatever I do, whatever I set this time frame up, I want to set it up the full term and loan, 30 years. Whatever I do there will affect these numbers here. And you have some choices. In this case, I'm showing the borrower how much interest and mortgage insurance they'll pay over that 30-year period. Perhaps I want to show them what their net worth is, is going to be over that 30-year period. Now, this assumes a 3% appreciation rate. Here again, you could change that to whatever you want. So you can look back historically what our properties done, what have properties done over the last 30 years. Well, they've appreciated maybe more, 5%. So again, you could change those numbers and it's going to affect these here as well. Your short-term analysis area, which is right here, you can adjust that to whatever time frame that you want. Um, there might be a particular product that's going to be more beneficial to have a certain time frame. Again, customize it to what your borrower's goals are. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to six, and I'm going to change it to interest in MI paid in that time frame. Okay, here, up in the top right corner, the monthly savings. So what it's doing is it's finding the product with the, uh, the most savings. You can see right now, the product that has the greatest amount of savings is right here, the 300000 uh, purchase price with the 5% down payment. Okay, that's saving the borrower $404 over the other products, or excuse me, this one's saving them the most. The product that's saving them the least is right here. So this is the one with the highest payment because it's tied to the highest purchase price with the lowest down payment. So you could, again, you could show the borrower, you know, the benefits of each of the different products if the borrower had a question about, well, what happens if I add an extra $50 to the mortgage payment? You could click on Adjust Reinvestment Strategy, and you can go ahead and click over here. This is a, a conventional loan, so they're going to have uh, 30 years for the term and 106 uh, payments of mortgage insurance. If they pay an extra, say, $100 or $50, you can see how that's going to adjust those numbers. Well, it's going to take their term down to 28 years and decrease the time that they're paying that mortgage insurance. Let me go ahead and tap out of that. So you have a lot of different tools available to take advantage of when you're using uh, and putting together an analysis. Okay, let's see here. Lori had a question. So when you create the different loan options, the MI factor is saved in the different templates. If you if you save, if you build a what we call a product template, Lori, exactly. That, that factor will be saved. So if it's something that you don't want to have saved, you can add that in each time. And it, that might be not be such a bad idea. I mean, if it's FHA insurance, I mean, it's going to be universal across the board for your borrower. But if you're using uh, conventional financing, I don't know if I'd necessarily want to save it because, again, it's going to be dependent upon the borrower's FICO score, and that could vary quite a bit. So. Just a, a, a heads up there. So if it's FHA, yeah, you can save it as a template, and absolutely, it's going to be that regardless of what the borrower's qualifications are. Okay, so this is the analysis area. This is where you customize it. This is where you put together a game plan um, for you know how best to demonstrate your your products. Let me go ahead and arrow over to the right. Now this is going to be TBD because again we don't have a, a an address, we're not under contract yet. And I'm going to go ahead and advance on. Now this is a total cost analysis. If for some reason you don't want a particular product to be shown to the borrower, uh, you can simply unclick the product that you don't want to have shown to the borrower. So 
if I don't want to show the borrower these FHA products, maybe they've said, you know what, I don't like that mortgage insurance or whatever the case is, I heard about that, I don't even want to see those products, then you can go ahead and unclick them and you can go ahead and, uh, and put just these two products to be shown on the presentation. I'm going to show you all four though. You have the opportunity to edit the information about the payment. And again, this is a total cost analysis. You can see the additional um, presentations that you could put together. And again, you still have the ability to make any type of editing under the different areas. Here's the monthly payment savings area, the short-term interest savings area, your long-term analysis. You can go ahead and get, uh, make any type of adjustments you need there. And then now we're at that final tab. So if, you want, if there was somebody that you wanted to have um, receive a notification, again, I put my, my assistant up here. You have to make sure that you put an email address in here so that when you get over here, you can go ahead and check this box so that not only you will receive a notification, but your, your partner will receive a notification that the presentation has been viewed as well. That's if you send the presentation out via email. Now that's what you're going to want to do you know, 99% of the times, but occasionally what's going to happen is you're going to encounter somebody that doesn't use email, doesn't use a computer, and you might have to print it out. But the benefit to you as an originator is that if you can send it out via email, you'll get a notification that the presentation has been viewed, which is huge because once you know that they viewed it, you can see how long they viewed it, and it's you're going to see how engaged your bar is. You can you know, if you have the, uh, the app downloaded to your mobile device, you don't even have to be in the office. Um, you can go ahead and give them a call once you've got that alert, strike while the iron's hot, and try and capture that business. So let me go ahead. Um, I'm going to protect myself with a quote date. Enter today's date. <clears throat> there we go. And you might be asking, okay, well, how does my borrower receive this information? Well, you're going to send it to them via email. You're going to click on Generate Link. This dynamic link is going to appear. You're going to highlight it. You're going to copy it, and then you're going to drop it in an email and send it to them. Now, this is a dynamic link so that, say the Newtons finally go under contract. Well, what you could do is you could take one of the products that, you, that you've already built and edit it to the numbers that they are going to put the offer in, uh, that they're going to be under contract on. So, and you can narrow it down specifically to one or two of the products that you've built for them. Um, it's a dynamic link. They only have to access that same link. You don't have to send them another link unless you specifically choose to do so. If you want to keep this one as it was, go right ahead. You, you go ahead and build another presentation and then send them another Another link, but if you want to go ahead and keep the same link throughout the whole time, just simply make some edits, um, change you know the numbers, and then what you're also going to want to do is update them with the video. I would highly encourage you to use a video each time that you build a total cost analysis. It's really going to help with the borrower's understanding of what they should be looking for in your presentation. I mean, they're going to get a great presentation here. You can see all the numbers are laid out for them. You can see all the graphs. So the borrower is going to be looking at this, and they're going to be, I mean, they're going to be going, wow. I mean, look at this presentation. Look at all the numbers. Look at all the graphs. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to record that video so that makes it even easier for them to understand what they should be paying attention to. You can, and since we're talking about making it easy, if there's something that specifically the borrower um, really needs to pay attention to, okay? In this case, the different purchase points, okay? Cash to close. I click on that and it highlights that area. So you have a highlight feature that you could take advantage of. So you could show the borrower the different payments that are associated with each of the different purchase points and the different products that you built. Um, they're going to be able to access all kinds of different information by clicking on that more info. They can see how the payment is broken down. Maybe you want to emphasize the mortgage insurance, how that changes with each of the different products and purchase price. They want to see the closing costs. Because I use a template, they could click on the fee detail and they can get that line itemization. For those people that are working with accountants and 
you know, engineers, if they have to see that line itemization of all the different costs, you can go ahead and do that. Um, if you put together that reinvestment strategy, showing them what that extra $50 a month could do, that would be located here for you. Now, as I mentioned, you're going to want to include a video. So when I go ahead and I click Generate Link, and I click on this Add Audio Video button, it's going to bring you to this screen, and you can see right down in here there's this box marked, or this box here. You click on Record Message. You can go ahead and click on, uh, let me click on the settings here. That way I won't get that message up every single time. There I am, folks. Good to see you. Happy Monday to you. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and record a video message here so you can see some content on the presentation. So I've just adjusted my camera so that I'm you know, pretty well centered in the presentation. Okay. My background is pretty simple, so the borrower is going to be focusing primarily on me. Um, when I'm speaking, I want to look directly into the camera. So if you need to make some notes, I would suggest that you go ahead and have those notes, but take the notes and stick them directly behind the camera. So that way when you speak, it looks like you're looking directly in the camera and you have those notes to go ahead and keep your stuff on point and focused. The last thing you want to do is give a presentation like this where you're reading from notes looking down. Um, and if you can see where I'm at in the, uh, the presentation, I want to be careful that you know, you're not doing this where you just have your head and the bar is looking at the ceiling or, you know, I've seen presentations where borrowers get like this close, or originators get that close to the camera. It looks kind of uh, <laughs> kind of scary. So there we go. So just a little, a uh, couple tips there for you. Let me go ahead and click off that. Let me click off this. Okay, let's see here. Dave had a question. I'm not showing a webcam. Can I make it mobile? Great question there, Dave. Thank you. Okay, so for those of you that don't have a camera on your, uh, your desktop and you don't want to go out and buy a, uh, a camera or if something's not working with your, your laptop and, or maybe the camera quality isn't that good, I'll tell you, use your mobile device and you just have to download the application. Again, I've, I've said this probably about four or five times now, download the mobile device the applications to your mobile devices because you can use your mobile device to record a message to it on this presentation. Let me bring my iPad over real quick, show you how easy it is. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on open, open the mortgage coach. Oops, looks like it's freezing up there on I me. Mean. Let me go ahead and try and open it this way. And it froze up on my last presentation here. There we go. That's better. Okay. Let me go all the way back to the login. Okay. So when you download the, the, the application to your mobile device for the very first time, you're going to get to this page where it will have a demonstration presentation for you. And the presentation is from our president, uh, Joe Pitour. Uh, but what you're going to want to do after you're done viewing the presentation is go to the silhouette in the top left corner. You're going to click on that. And here, let me, let me repeat that here. So I'm going to purposely log out. So again, this is the first time that you get to the to Mortgage Coach in uh, using your mobile device. You'll get to this page. There'll be a presentation from our president, Joe Pitour. Then you're going to log in by clicking in the, uh, on the silhouette up there in the top left corner. You can see it's, you're going to be entering your credentials. I've entered it one time. All you have to do is enter your credentials one time. It'll save it. So it's saved. I'm going to click sign in, and that's going to bring me to my dashboard. Now, the presentation I just built was for Cam Newton, and he is a borrower. So I'm going to go ahead and click on clients. I'm going to find Cam Newton. You can see Cam right up there. I'm going to click on Cam. I'm going to click on the presentation, total cost analysis, and then I'm going to click on video. So I'll bring up my camera, and then there I am. So I can go ahead and add a presentation this way as well. So it's that easy. And your camera will most likely be much uh, better looking 
our, the, uh, the quality will be much better than uh, most likely your, your desktop. Um, so I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. Let's see here. Dave had another question. Okay. Yeah, I mean, some, some enterprise accounts, I mean, you'd have to get uh, clarification from them. Uh, Dave's question was that uh, the organization that he's working for, unfortunately, doesn't allow him to, uh, to do so um, using uh, the, uh, I guess, the webcam from his, uh, his computer. But he might be able to do it from your uh, mobile device. I mean, I don't want to get you in trouble with your with the organization. You definitely want to get clarification from them if it's uh, okay to go ahead and add a video presentation to it. But this is what it's going to look like, folks. And I can go ahead and I can share this. So I'm going to click the share button. That'll pull up that link as well. So if, if you do a presentation to like a, a group of first-time home buyers um, or a group of realtors, and you want to post it on your face on your Facebook page. You can do that again. I mean, if, as long as it's in compliance with your um, your company, I'm going to go ahead and drop that link in there so you, you can see what it looks like from your borrower's laptop or desktop. So this is what your borrower will receive. Uh, I'm gonna, they would click on this disclaimer. I understand. You can see there's the video presentation that I just built. So I just adjust. Go ahead and mute that. The borrower can move that off to the side if they want. Um, they can watch it as many times as they want, and you can see the uh, the presentation. So this is the exact presentation that the borrower will, will receive. You can see that they can't clear any of the highlights, um, like the, like I can here in my presentation here. You can see the difference between the uh, the two. There's no clear all or record message. This is the uh, the borrower's presentation here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click off that. All right, so hopefully by this point you were able to follow along and build the presentation along with me, that you were able to, to log in and uh, access it, build the presentation. So what I'm going to ask you folks to do now is go ahead and uh, generate that link that you just built. Okay, generate the link right here. Copy it and then send that off to us here at Mortgage Coach. And the email address again is support at mortgagecoach.com. S-U-P-P-O-R-T at mortgagecoach.com. Be happy to take a look at it, give you some feedback. Um, and that way also for those of you that are um, using this on a trial basis, that will give you the opportunity to go ahead and continue to access uh, mortgage coach, I believe the time frame, it's, it's either five or seven days, but you've got to send that, uh, that link into us so that way they'll go ahead and allow you to continue to access it and play around with the, uh, the, the software so you can make sure that it's a good fit for, uh, for your business. Now, <clears throat> you might also be asking, okay, well, how do I get help? Um, how do I get additional support if I, if I need um, some, some help uh, in doing it? Again, my name, I'll go ahead and I'll log out here. Here's my email address, brian at mortgagecoach.com. Um, I'll be happy to help you, but the one thing to keep in mind is that if you want a quick response, I do a lot of training on-site, off-site, so my schedule is, is uh, very busy and it's tough for me to be able to respond to um, you real quickly. If you need a quick response, definitely send it to that email address support at mortgagecoach.com. The benefit to you there is that that's that email address, it's manned from 8 to 4 Pacific Standard Time, and they will typically get back to you in a half an hour or less. So that's where you want to make sure that you, you send your, your questions to. Um, let me go ahead and share with you too our uh, support center so that uh, you can view the videos that we have in there. We actually have a YouTube site for Mortgage Coach where you can view hundreds of different video. YouTube videos are typically 10 minutes or less. Let me go ahead and real quickly go up to the help up here. So you can see this is our support center. So if you wanted to learn some more about, um, say, maybe video, okay, click on that. You're going to see a YouTube presentation on how to create a and edge video. 
We already have some that you that you want to make sure that you take advantage of when you when you get started here. The featured walkthrough videos, how to build a purchase total cost analysis, like we just did, how to build a refinance total cost analysis. There's a lot of different quick links. But if you want to um, learn about Mortgage Coach in an interactive environment, we actually have our Mortgage Coach University where we have training available for you the first three weeks of every month. Um, our first week gear is geared towards purchase transactions, second week towards refinance, and third week we put together advanced strategies using the information that you learned in those first two weeks. But you can go ahead and sign up for those. They're available. The 101 series is 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and the, uh, the 102 is 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Let me go ahead and click on the, uh, the calendar of events. And you can see the upcoming events here for our month. You can see the different interviews our CEO, Dave Savage, is going to be conducting. Um, we have our mobile Wednesdays course to teach you how to use your mobile devices using Mortgage Coach, our Thursday Q&A call, and then, of course, our 101 and 102 series. So we literally have training available for you almost every day of the week. You just have to step up and uh, take advantage of it. So thanks so much for joining me, folks. I'll be happy to hang out here. If you have any additional questions, um, please send that link to, to us here at support at mortgagecoach.com. I'll be happy to take a look at it. And then, of course, um, if you'd like to access it on a trial basis here for an additional amount of time, I think it's five, seven days, you do need to send that link in to us. So I'll be happy to hang out. Any additional questions, please do not hesitate to type them in the question area. Otherwise, we can go ahead and wrap up for the day. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap it up for today then. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope to see you folks in future training sessions. Have a great day and a great week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.